Yeah, I think the recording has started. All right. Thanks, Mohara. So, Venu, uh, did you get a chance to go through the some of the materials in the yeah, weekend? Correct. I was able to go through some of it. Okay, good. Do you have any questions? Maybe you want to ask something or it's fine? No, it's fine for now. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. So I think today, you know, we'll talk about functions and yeah, at least the function before that, some more data types, which are left over. So it becomes easy for us. So, you know, okay. some remaining data, data types, which you can play around with and see. Okay. And there you say, so I think, you know, let's complete a little bit of structure and unions. Okay. Okay. Uh, and arrays declarations. We get a hold of those declarations and then introduce you to you know the functions. So if you know predominantly the the function uses, it will improve you know the programming skills. <clears throat> so now, can you uh, see my screen as of now? Um, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. All right. Okay. I think yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, I can see. How about it now? Yeah, okay. All right. So let's take uh, an example in terms of arrays. So you must have worked on arrays, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah, so something which worries you about array or something ever on the one, which you have come across? Um, yeah, I think the, the concept is not that clear to me. I don't know have you to. Okay. So maybe we can... Sure, sure. So I think what we do is we take a direct example and start with that. And then maybe, yeah, so, so it would be... So, uh, yeah, Tim. how do you map the Google Drive? I mean, I tried doing like using some tools, but I was able to do it. But uh, just curious, like how you you have mapped it? I mean. Uh, you know, on a Mac, what you could do is when you install VirtualBox, there is something called as VirtualBox extension pack. Okay. Uh, okay. So once you download that, okay. VirtualBox extension. Yeah. So when we go here, right? Um, okay. Just show you. You have the virtual box installed, right? Actually, I'm running on Linux. Oh, okay. So, so on Linux, there is no need for this. But in case if you want to run on a Windows like a virtual box, then there is a concept of uh, are you are you in a dual mode or you're running as a virtual box? Uh, I'm in dual mode. Oh, you are in a dual mode. So while you're on Linux, your uh, Windows is not available. Uh, that's not available. So, oh, okay. I mean, so I tried to map it. I can share the screen. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, there is some, I, I, I just found some tool um, called, um, what is it? Uh, Ocam, Ocam. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, uh, once I sign out of Gmail, then everything. That's goes it. Through. Yeah, yeah. It <laughs> needs. It needs to be logged in, and in my machine also, I'm always logged in. So. It's, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> I don't sign out. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's the same thing, but it is on Windows. That's so, uh, it's on Linux for you, and it's on Mac on me. So oh. the moment you sign out, no, it's a security thing. So right now your uh, files may not be available directly on that. Yeah. So once I sign out and sign in again, then I should. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. Sync again, right? Yeah. Exactly. 
Exactly, exactly. Thank you. Yeah, otherwise what you can do is you can write a little script, okay, which can do this job. So those steps or comments which you're writing, put in a script and just run them. That's all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So at least to yeah. some extent it will help. True, true. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise it's a messy thing. Yeah. Got, got it, right? Yeah. Thanks. Sir. Yeah. Thank cool, cool, cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, uh, I think, you know, from our perspective, uh, I would like to take example itself straight away. Okay. okay. So let me take an example here. You know, we talk about locality of reference and array is a very strong uh, uh, feature in C and in any other language because it's an example of a collection, you know, a collection where you can start, you know, storing data and Array typically likes to know the type in, in, in advance. So at the compiled time, you must know, you know, the kind of uh, um, type you are going to store the data with. So you can think of it as a collection of similar or, you know, homogeneous container. So array is a very good example of homogeneous container where a similar set of data can be stored. And by using a combination of now that that brings to you the next question that you know in real world we may not have homogeneous containers right we may have heterogeneous containers so real life objects might have different data types so there well then you have a uh, concept of an struct or a union and then when you take a struct then you combine all the data types uh, together and then you can add that with an array of you know a structure so it again solves your collection of uh, whatever the data type you want to create, you know? Okay. But once you build the things on array, I think it becomes easier for you to, um, yeah. it's, it's more, one more, you know, programming trait which we all should be, you know, aware about. Okay. So there are some rules and which we should be aware about, you know, the arrays. So I'll try to, you know, cover all of them in one example. So, you know, first and foremost, uh, I think, okay, let me change this to some of the color. File, file management, and green block, green block, green block. Is this fine with you? That's, that's better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, one of the very important thing is that array is an example of locality of references. Now, locality of references is like, you know, contiguous memory. Contiguous. And when I say contiguous memory, it means the compiler guarantees that the addresses will be always nearby. Okay. So one adjacent to another, it's guaranteed that if this is the first element, then there has to be the second element next to it. So it's very easy to predict. So that's first thing. So because of this, okay. array name itself, is an example of base address. The concept of base addresses. The idea is based on the assumption that hardware says that once you have access to one of the location or the starting location, it's more likely that you will be referring the nearby locations, you know? So it automatically, based on this base address concept, a is available for you. So the moment you have a base address, you can use a numeric on it or arithmetic on it by which you can almost find a predictable position, you know, in contiguous location. So it's predictable. You can predict that where is the next element. However, 
because of this assumption, it's very difficult to fetch the end of an array. So there is no control for a concept called as array index out of bound errors, you know, which is very serious thing, you know. Okay. So out of bound error. And hence the address scheme is, is n minus one. Now, just to give you an example, if I say a declaration of an array of an integer list, so if I say int i list, and if I give say 10, what does it mean is that 10 does not holds any meaning in it. 10 is illegal. So if I say, so it's like open-ended, n minus one, so address is, always how do you find the end of an address? The actual size minus one. So if I say max size to be 10, and if I replace this 10 to be max size, then it is illegal to say list of max size. This is an example of out of bound address. As index starts from zero, zero. So uh, actual legal addresses are gonna be what? We can think of list of, sorry, I list in this case, also I list. So I list of zero. So till I list of nine, nine. Okay. is a valid address. Anything beyond that is completely undefined by the language. So just a guess, okay? Some might predict on a particular architecture what is the next element, but you know, it is almost uh, illegal to even consider those addresses apart. Now, with this, there is something, you know, address is zero to n minus one, or I would say it as size minus one. For this, there is one more thing which is very critical that, you know, passing and returning an array. So whenever you pass or return an array, it can never be passed by value. Now, what does it mean that say, if I had a function here, let's consider this example, that if I had a function which says square, okay, and it takes some list which we are passing. Okay. So imagine that tomorrow this max size is, say some thousand of uh, element. So if I pass this entire array by value, now you know what you mean by pass by value, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So if not, the pass by value means that there will be a copy generated for every time you call a function. So if I have thousand element, and if I pass those thousand element by value, it will have thousand copy generated. Now you can imagine how serious the program will become. If, if this is the case, you, you, know, you can imagine large objects will really suffer. So keeping this in mind, arrays are always passed by address. So passing and returning, and the same thing with returning also. Passing and returning an array is always by address. Oh, okay. Always by address. Otherwise you will end up creating so many temporaries, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But because of this, there is another thing. Size of the array is lost. Okay. Okay. As a while. Hey, should... Hilly, no problem. It's okay. Kids are 
Fascinating. You cannot stop them. <laughs> you stop them, they'll stop you. <laughs> Lost while passing and returning. They don't care what you learn or not. They are just in their own world. <laughs> uh, size of her is lost while passing and returning. It, it's very important. So that is why, you know, if you want to, you know, because of this, there's a supporting rule that one must find means to means to to send the or find the size of an array. You know, it's important that you say that, you know, how do you find the size of an array or list of an array? So, you know, it's it is important. So when I say, you know, the size of an array is lost, it is, or it is passed by an address, what happens? How can it pass by address? It is the pointer which can hold it as if it is an array, right? Okay. okay. So this array and pointers are interchanged as a part of function parameter or a part of function being returning those parameters. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. I will explain this with a small example. Okay. Now let's talk about some quick initialization techniques also. So one of the quick initialization technique is that I can assign this and leave it zero. It means all the elements of an array is initialized to zero. Second, in classic, uh, say, ANSI, it's not possible. Array size must be defined. defined or no, predefined. But this is not true as the part of the function argument or a return, remember. Uh -huh. So what's... Um... The reason is, even though you're syntactically writing it is an array, it is referred as pointer. Because we know it is being treated as what? Whenever we pass the array, what happens? It cannot be passed by value, right? Oh, yeah. It will generate too many temporary. So what we do, we convert them into the address. That's what it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's the reason. So if you, you know, uh, pass this here as an empty, it's a compile time, declaration, it will figure it out. But the moment you pass it as if it is an array here, it will be compilable, simply replace this particular function signature to be something like this, you know, I'll write it on top and comment it. It will become something like this, which you don't see. That's what it will become. Oh, that, okay. That's... So line number 15 and 16 doesn't have any difference from the compiler's view. Oh, now I understand, okay. Yeah, so user thinks that it's an array, but internally it is converted as a pointer. Okay. So that's why whenever we try to print the size of these array, we will come to so let's try to see that print there the size of the array is now now how do i know the size of an array at compile time there is a keyword called as size of okay size of it will evaluate the size of any data type so i can say list so list if it is an array here how do i pass a list now you see this is a, going to be a compiled time error at line number 22 knowing that i'll come in there now let's try to say i'll call this function word square and here i have to pass the array so i'll just the name of the array itself is the base address another formal way of passing could have been what address of i list of zero you get that Yes, yeah. Yeah. Or same thing. You can directly say I list. Both refer to the same. So the moment I say this now, let's try to print the size before the call. So I'll do it. The size of array before call. Here the name is I list. So I'll just put it as it is. And now I will open this. 
そうなのかわかんないですよ。ですかオッケー、メディア。メディア。どこへ I think it might also be a good idea for you to、uh, you know, install a mini Linux version on, on Windows itself so that you can simultaneously work on both. you know? Oh, okay. So I, I should be able to access the dual.、Um, the yeah, not even, no, not dual, the virtual box. You, know, you have to install a complete different instance of a Linux itself. Oh, okay. So that you know, you can do an experiment, you can pause the work, you can resume the work from where you are. So you, you need to get free freedom from this, you know, shutdown, restart, and all those things. Right, right, okay. okay. I'll try. So,、that. yeah, so maybe, you know, when you are free, maybe one of the s e s s i o n just、yeah. take a 15 minutes of、uh, step by step to finish that job also. Sure, yeah.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tools and then concept. Okay, there is. So now I'll say GCC array. Let's see. Okay, you know, these、uh, errors are coming because of as a warning. I can directly include them and make them happy.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, those favorite headers are troubling us. Yeah, so let me come in here. Yeah. And now we can see. So, as you can see very, very clearly, right? Yeah. The max size is 1000. So, on this side, maybe the integer size is 4 bytes and 32 bits. So, it's multiplying 4000 bytes. And now you see the moment you pass that at line number 18, it has become 4 bytes. So, how do you, you know, explain somebody that, you know, see, now you see. The function square is planned to have in a way that you know, all the elements h a s to be squared over here. So, any changes made by this function will be also reflected in the calling function. Now, I'm trying to show you this also. What's happening? Same, right? That base address versus the explicit address. Line number 28, 29 are interchangeable. Okay. Yeah.、So、now, my question is that our intention was that we will be printing the square of all these numbers, correct? Okay. So, a simplest way could be that, okay, let's do something like for i assign zero, i less than the max size. Because here I have got the size, right?、Mm -hmm. And plus plus i. Got that. Because of the definition, yeah it is possible. Correct? Yes. But there is no formal way of we knowing that there are thousand elements already there. Correct. Yeah. 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 It's only to, to be pre fetched and it's forced for you to go for that 10,000. Whether you have it or not, does not matter.、Okay. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Just to give an example, I can reduce this to say just 10 for an example right now. And here I say that let's square them. So I'll say list of zero, which is in this case i, will assign to list of i, and that would multiply itself. List of i, correct?、Mm -hmm. Something like this. And I need to declare an i, so I'll say int i. And similar logic here, so I'll take this stuff and try to print after the function, correct? Yep. So again,、I'll、go on top and declare it.、Mm -hmm. After the SQL call. Yeah. Let's try this out. 
Now you can see, okay, list looks not to be, you know, declared itself first and foremost. You should be able to understand them. And then you have undeclared identifier, you know, somewhere at line number, this one. When you come back to mean, it is no more list, it's just an I list. So screaming about that. Got it, no? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. That LIS is different there. Yeah. So I think we should have been printing here. Oh, uh, yeah. Rather than re squaring them. Print here. And we will print all the elements here. So mod D, comma, and just say yeah, list of Y. We don't need this. So what am I doing? I'm just trying to print the, uh, the elements, give a space to them. And after this, I'm trying to format. I'll be out of the for loop. So I can give one more new line. So it'll look a little bit more decorative. Just that as if, yeah. Just trying to format. I hope you can understand the yes. environment there. Okay, what's missing here? One comma after double quotes is missing. Here. This comma is a format. Mm -hmm. which I want to print yes. and this is uh, the syntax. So we passed all of them as zero and we, it is still zero because you know, you remember when I say once you assign zero, all will be zero. So that's being verified now. Yes. Line yeah. number 26. Yeah. Now let's try to give some value. And let's try this. So as expected, we can see the squares are being performed. So all the changes which you're making in the function in the square, you can see that it is coming up in the calling function. Okay. okay. So that's the advantage of because we used a macro max size, it could you know, globally apply everywhere. So that's, that's why we prefer using macro. If you do not use macro, then how do you solve this? Yeah. Um... Imagine, now there's a small idea I will be asking. Assume that I don't give you this macro stuff. And I say, now you find what's your max size. Yeah, it'll, it'll be different. <laughs> I mean, in it's challenging to guess, right? Yeah. So I assume that, you know, we'll have a variable called as max size. So here the technique is that if you want these kind of functions to carry, you have to introduce one more formal parameter called as max size. Got it. Mm -hmm. And before you make a call to this square, the main function itself specifies the size. Oh, okay. Okay. So like number of elements. Now, how do I find the number of element? Okay. So we can say number of element assigns size of i list which would divide it by size of i list of zero got it 
So size of I list is going to be what? If there is 10 elements, 10 multiplied by 4, it's going to be 40. Uh, 10, um, yeah. What I'm trying to say is, when I say size of I list, yeah. I list has a size of what? Some 10 size, right? Ten. By default, you have insert 10. Yeah. I'll remove this max. I'll comment this for you. Okay. And I can show you the another style. Like I will not give maxes. I can leave like this. Also. It's also fair enough. Okay. So how many elements you have written here as hard coded? That is a total element. Correct. One, yeah. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is ten. But how do you know it is ten? You can, see one of the technique is you can hard code and pass here ten, right? Instead of this. Yeah. I list comma ten. I can pass right because I know it. But right. tomorrow this length can grow. No, somebody else will sit on this code base tomorrow after five years. He might need to extend this for more element. Correct. Okay. Then it might have to work on different architectures also. So based on the size has to be also calculated. Mm -hmm. So size of will give you the architecture specific content. The same source code can run on a 16 bit, 32 bit, 64 bit. So size of will give the value accordingly. Correct. Yes. So when I give the base address of an array. What does it mean? The entire size of the array is what I'm looking at. Okay. Which is what? 4 multiplied by 10 elements. So 40 bytes. This output of this is going to be 40 bytes. You have already seen it, right? Uh, let me show you here. That's where I'm a little confused. I mean, how... Uh, no worries. Let's, let's, let me show you this. Remember, the size of an array is before the call was how much? Oh, the four, okay, okay. You remember when we tried to print the size before the call, we said size of I list. I list. Okay. So whenever we want to know the array size, it will give the total amount of bytes allocated. for it. So if one element of an integer takes four bytes, then 10 elements will be 10 into oh, four. I'm sorry. Four so the size is in terms of bytes. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Ah, yeah, exactly. It's in terms of bytes. That was confusing you, I guess. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Sorry. yeah. yeah no, no worries. So that is forty bytes. Yeah. And size of i list of zero. I list of zero is what? Only one of the element. Yeah. So it's going to be four. Four bytes. So forty divided by four is going to be what? Ten. Ten. Yeah. What is the advantage of it tomorrow is that even though I introduced some more element here, you know, say 123, comma, 45, comma, 66 or 665, something like this. Mm -hmm. I don't need to much worry because this will give me the exact amount of element, right? Because size of now how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Right? So 13 into 4 should be my size, isn't it? Yes, correct. So 52 and, and that should be divided by 4 and that will be my 13 as a size which will go as an you know? So architecture independent way of calculating the number of elements. Okay. In case if you do not have these global macro style available. You know? Okay, yeah, yeah, understood. So both are possible. Let's check this, the correctness. You can see here the max size is scribbing now at line number 43, 12, colon. So line number 43, let's go directly here. It is scribbing about this max size because we have already disabled it. Yeah. I'm disabling this. So I don't need max size anymore. I can directly use what? Number of elements. Uh, elements, yeah, elements. Yeah. Yeah, plural. Okay, sorry, sorry, it's an old uh, output. Yeah. And now we have something. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. Now, you know, the usage of an array is so strong whether you use it in, because if you look around the world, right? Uh, it is really astonishing that the majority of the product which we build, right, they all are an example of contiguous memory location. 
and why it is contagious is because you know it's easy for me to have an access to the nearby location rather than jumping around and hopping and manage the memory you know okay so assume that we all are sitting in a classroom session okay let's say in areas uh, we are having that on the top some vikram shila or something is there on the name of the name on the top yeah and there are some 25 people sitting in a row uh, i mean in a classroom arrangement kind of a thing and everybody has got a water bottle one of the way i can pick the water bottle is that i pick one of the water bottle from the first row then i go to the last row and pick one bottle then i come to the third row and pick one bottle then i go to the fifth row and pick one bottle then i go to the ninth row and pick one bottle and then i want to keep them back in the order which we had come yeah cool. versus i picking up the bottle one after another in the one row so i go to one row and pick all the three bottles maybe three people are sitting on that row then go for the next row pick the next three bottles and the next three bottles and the next three bottles what are we seeing here yeah the speed right so the advantage of contiguous memory location for storing the data has been the spar in computing technologies from last you know four decades you look at the storage devices now let's take some more examples of storage devices if you consider in a hard drive mm -hmm. hard drives stores the data in terms of what chs yeah c c as in cylinder h as in head and s as in sector everything boils down to sector finally right yeah. and each sector is contiguous in nature so i have a zeroth sector then a first sector then a factorial sector then a 1024 sector then and so and so on right we might logically organize and partition that k hey, you are a c colon or a d colon or a e colon or alias it as say, a hierarchy that okay you are in root you are in root bin you are in root lib or you are in root etc or so and so on right we may organize the data in a hierarchy tree structure but actually when you get into looking at the data storage technique it is what contiguous in nature you see the whole world of the cpu which is designed so if you look at the cpu being designed cpu's registers are one adjacent to another so i don't have scattered registers i have r0 and then followed by r1 and r2 and an r3 and an r4 right okay. yes yes look at a building around us which is being created if there is a colony in a colony also i have arranged the houses in a row style order that it should be one then two then b3 then b4 then b5 and b6 easy management right readability readability accessibility and you know predictability so determinism is yeah. something which gets added you know along with this yeah. you know let's look at other things like you know ccd when you take a digital camera and you click pictures we have something like a ccd you know what is that right uh, not the cafe cafe day <laughs> ccd means in bangalore coffee cafe day <laughs> cafe coffee day <laughs> just kidding it's called as charge coupled devices yeah right yeah. and charge coupled devices stores all these you know uh, pictures which you take or images which you take in some bits and all these bits are stored in an array you can think of them as a different matrix form yes okay you think about any games which we play for example if i have to write a chess game you know mm -hmm. and we have to predetermine the set of basic moves all the moves are stored in matrix form you do any arithmetical operations anywhere nearby again in that you look at a ram storage technique contiguous in nature okay. so you know everywhere in you know, the 96 to 98% of our implementation which we see is an example of contiguous memory location and array well fits in all these situations you know so having and mastering an array based uh, you know programming is said to be you know um, a genius programmers not kidding okay and and understanding that its applications you know also becomes very so how do we play with an array is an art of of arts okay 
so you know to extend this in mathematical world you know we solve a lot of continuous functional problems like say if you take a digital world problem most of the data which we store it in is known in a predetermined uh, you know pattern right so i know if this sensor is going to throw me a real number so i'm going to store it in a, in a in a double of an array series data or if i have to create a continuous function i have to have a, you know in a series of data which has to be stored and to polluted tomorrow if i have to do a graph i have to do the job you know so array really dominates uh, i mean i mean dominates the, the, the entire application world wherever right from hardware software to the things which we live around you know so it makes all the more sense to learn about how mathematical uses of it can happen so that's the reason why in academia you will see that you know a lot of matrix lists transformation addition of two matrices or you know multiplication of two array matrices and transposing of array matrices or transposing so how do we use an array as if it is a matrix so you know one dimension array to an two dimension array to a three dimension array to an n dimension array now this is interesting for you to know a little bit okay so let's get into representation of array in some mathematical notions or dimension so the implementation of an array array dimensions is a row major order now row major order now this is very interesting row major order in the sense again the contiguity is maintained in some languages it is column major order now how do you know about this let's take an example here itself so if i take an array of a list of or well, i just write say arr of of say 2 3 or if i say a r r 3 comma 3 or if i say a r r of 2 comma 3 of 3 okay mm -hmm. something like this so it's all the representation you know the, the now let's try to represent the first one it means the indexes which will start so there is an array which will have 0 0 and then you will have 0 1 as an index and then it happens to have 1 0 and then it will have 1 1 got it yeah but row major order in the sense it goes first like this it means row 0001 and then 1010 so uh easier way to explain this is as good as you thinking about it transposing to 00 01 and it is representation in mathematical order that's all so programmatically you can program you know in this way so this is how the memory is stored in the in the run time okay if you look at a ram so first will be 0 0 then will be this then will be third then will be fourth so you know the idea is that you know if you know the starting address of this so if you know the starting address of this which is what an arr correct so arr plus 0 ARR plus one, ARR plus two, and ARR plus three. All these refer to the same location of zero 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 one one zero one. Getting me? Correct. Yes. Yes. That is what it means. Okay. So this is an example of what row major order. Now, can we have the example of this, the fourteenth one? Thirteenth, we can skip. It's a very easy pick. It's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. It means there are two arrays of three by three matrix. Just like you know, it will start something like zero, zero, zero one, 
zero zero one. Yeah, this is what I'm looking for. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you go for zero zero. Zero. Um, yeah, this is zero. This is, uh, uh, so zero 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 should be the first one, isn't it? Yeah. So zero zero one. Then I say zero zero two, because you have three cross three, right? Oh yeah, correct. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Three, yeah. And then we will go for zero one zero zero. And then you will have one zero one. And then we'll have one zero two. Right? Yeah. And so and so on. Yeah. So it should be three into three, nine into two, eighteen elements. So it's like two, three by three, nine by nine. Yeah. Yeah, something like this. So one is just a qualifier, but zero 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 one zero two, zero 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 one zero two zero three, and so and so on. So diagrammatically, it looks you know more easier than the way I'm trying to write over it. I could have drawn the diagram. And passing these elements becomes more tricky. So they say if you have a function where you have to pass n dimension array, say for example, if you have to pass a two by three, then the first element, which is the row, must be passed. It means if I have a function here, say, 2D function. Okay. And if I have to pass an int ARR, I cannot leave both of them empty. That's not correct. You must specify the row major of. Second one you can leave empty, that's fine. But the first one. Has to be defined. Okay. Yeah, should be defined by ISO. It is a must. If not, when you pass an array, it might have challenges in cribbing. So let's try mm -hmm. in the beginning here to pass it. So I'm just going to comment this so that you don't have a challenge. Why, why? I just paste it here. Okay. Let me move from here. Let me code comment here. It's okay. Yeah. So I'll say 2D function. Uh, name of the function must start from some character. Two D function, and here we will pass and okay. Let me declare a variable in. mat of two of three and I just want to pass mat let's try compile this stuff you can see here okay t w o d underscore function so array has an incomplete element, element type so what I do here is say, okay, if I give you a row, how about that? Okay, and then I think there is some insert edit. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, 
something like this. In fact, you know, it says that I do not know who is this mat. So I'll have to specify that, okay, I'll be passing mat of zero. Let me also initialize this to say zero. Maybe now it is perfectly fine to accept it that there is an element coming up. Now it says the parameter one still looks to be an incomplete type. Usually in this is GNU 9.9, you should be able to accept if you have a row major order you know, known to your element. Okay. okay. Yeah. Because mat of zero very clearly specifies that I am the first element. It doesn't know that it is an address and it cannot be passed as value. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I'll say, okay, can you take my address? And then it still, you know, denies me this. Okay. Yeah. I will have two by three placed. And I will have still mat of zero to be accepted. But now you can see an interesting. It is expecting as if it is a you know incomplete pointer type being passed because address is not. It it thinks the address of the starting addresses array is not available. By swing this, it should be able to accept that it is a first element of an array. So at this moment, if I try to print the element with say a row and a column and i is zero i less than say two plus plus i and then i go for one more for loop because i have to use the j as well and j less than two and plus plus j and here i can say array of i and j say assigns to some function get value say now what this value is going to do is return get uh, value let's make a static in data science 100 return data minus one Let's see. plus plus data so first time it is 100 it will become 101 again data minus one so 100 is what being made. next time it will be more and then i'll be 100 100 200 3 like this is what i'm expecting from this mm -hmm. okay if you want to start from the number 101 also you don't care you just, just can return from this that's okay so you have standard one, two, three, like this, 101, 102, 103. It keeps coming here. See, I of zero, so value will be, you know, printed in this fashion. When we go out over here, let's see the print. We have to still perform the printing outside this format. And here we have to see, yeah, so we just print this. print of mod d the values we have to print is array of i comma j even you can you know do some formatting and formats also i'm just ignoring as of now okay. like every line you know you can give the new line or something mm -hmm. Error of this, okay, here. Let's remove the error. This is ARR. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to see, we can run some predetermined example, but the thing is when you see the construction, right? Yeah. You feel as if you're also coding across. So I, that's why I'm using this technique. True. Otherwise, you know, I can uh, have the, you know, examples which is already there for your reference, yeah. keep running them. 
the problem it is static so you cannot see the construction technique correct yeah that's so that's why i'm just going in this line i hope it's fine yes yeah and you know here error catching also is there so some of them are intentional some of them will catch up type of errors you can see here so at least you are able to correlate okay it's line number what kind of errors are there so will some stress to you that's all yeah where is the next error is what we have to look at is here the name of an array is not array it's here no? it's mat as you can see 101 102 103 104 1, because 2 of 3 is total 6 2 3 6 elements yeah started with 2 and went with only 2 others are unfilled so j is 3 column i should go for 3 here also j should go for the 3 column in that case 2 into 3 all the 6 elements will be initialized in okay. as you can see you know n dimensional arrays can be tricky if not practiced so you know what i will do is i'll give you some two three you know uh, questions to you know uh, try on your own you know sure let's see how you go okay now let's also understand about the addresses related to the uh, array you know how you can uh, play with it so address calculation is also a very important thing let me show you this with a small example this is a very tricky thing not many people know about this okay so you know i will give you an example of say 2 3 4 5 6 as an element okay now uh, if i say printf mod d slash n and i would say must uh, no of of 4 so what is the result very clear six yeah five is illegal four is the last element so right this is zero one two three fourth zero. array of array of fourth is the fifth element so it is the six which is we are we are going to get printed correct correct yeah now let's try to understand this with the concept of address so if i say how offsetting takes place okay mm. mod p and if i say address of this and if i say plus one notice this and this bracket before this and we want to print the addresses here by the way so one is with bracket and the another is without the bracket here it is expecting that i do not know the you know the left hand side value naturally it's not a pointer so i will put something like must know array Yeah. yeah so yeah this is one and one will be yeah i think this will be much yeah. it will help you to understand the way we do offsetting you know yeah that's the whole idea Now you see what happens is the moment we want to interact and address of must know array plus one 
if you see, mm -hmm. doesn't accept the token as if it is an array. Correct. Though, though we know that array can be used by this, you know, a square bracket. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the moment I say it says it's a syntactical difference. Now I'll take this out. And I'll just print the first one. Then I'll show you through pointer. How does it changes? Okay. Look at this address. To be somewhere the six is as expected you know right yeah yeah so zero b f f nine six six two eight this is one address which is plus one and now i am not going to use this but i'm going to use the base address and then try to print the same stuff okay. so i will can you see the difference, by the way? So, it's a crazy difference out there. Yeah. Um, so we have learned just now that there is a technique of name of an array itself refers to what? Uh, um, address. The starting address, right? The name of the array itself refers to the starting address or the base address, correct? Correct. Yeah. 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 And we are trying to increment to that as plus one. So it is trying to take that. Right. So when we say plus one, it refers to a different address. But when I say address of an array plus one, it refers to a different address. This is very interesting. Yeah. Can you figure out what's happening? I'll give you, say, some 10 seconds or 15 seconds. Yes, this. Yeah. Well, what's happening is it's the offset jump. So if I say an array, okay, let me now show you this is. Take some color here. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see, I can see. Yeah. So assume that this is an array where this is zero and this is mm -hmm. the fifth element. Okay. So the, when the, when I say this is an ARR and if I say address of ARR plus one, it means it is going to hop from here to the next line, next offset of it. It is referring here. Oh, okay. So you can guess if I say address of ARR plus two, where should it hop? Um, la last but one. Uh, no. Somewhere else here. Plus three means it will jump. So offset of an array is being jumped. Remember. So every time you see a plus one, address of an array refers to what? This entire contiguous block. Oh. Yeah, not much people know this. So the moment you say plus one, it means it is going to the next block of the next five elements. Oh, address of the array means, I mean, irrespective of the number of uh, elements. Elements, yeah. So suppose if you have something like 10 elements, it will jump to 10 after 10 elements, 11th element. Oh. If you have 10,000 elements, if you say array of address plus, it will go to the 10,000 first element. Awesome it is. Oh. Oh. So, you know, this is how you can have a block programming. You're getting it. Yeah. 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 But if I say something like ARR plus one, that is very simple. This means what? I'm referring to some element, uh, you know, first element or something like that, you know? Yeah. The, it's pretty simple, somewhere here maybe. Okay. That's the difference. Not much people know this. Oh, okay. Thanks. Very interesting.
Yeah, very interesting. So when you play with pointers, if you are aware about this contagious way of jumping, mm -hmm. you can plan the pointer to hold the address of array accordingly. Do you want to block jump? Do you want to sell jump? That's you can decide this. Uh, one dumb question. Yeah, uh, ask me. Ask. Is there? Um, I mean, so if there is, for example, there are ten elements. Mm -hmm. So each element won't have a pointer or address. Each element will have an address. Okay, no worries. But the moment you say that you are taking the base address of an array, it will always jump to the offset address. Of offset. Okay. I understood. understood. Yeah. Now, okay. Don't worry. I will have a test test module for this also for you. Yes. I'm thinking. Now I'm really thinking to you know have one good test module for you now. <laughs> yeah, you should try. Let's let me show you this. Just trying to uh, you know. Apprehend if I take a you know a star IP pointer you know and it is holding and so I'll say AP mm -hmm. and I will say must know array okay? okay now you have to predict me the value and I will say AP assigns to address of must know array plus one. And now I'm going to say printf mod d and mod d slash n. I'm going to say star ap. Or I will not say star app. You will just say must know array of say two. And must know array of value. Uh, yeah. Yeah, star AP. What do you think the result should be? Yes. Um, the first one is pretty simple. Yeah, that F2 is going to be four. Four, perfect. And um, the address of AP, it's going mm. to be address of must know RF plus one. So it's going to be... Um, address past this element. Correct? Yeah. It can't be the second element. So can three be modified? Then the result is different, right? If it is three, it's different, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if I say something like star AP is equal to 100, star AP will be 100. But I do not know whether it is a APP of three or not. That is a question, right? Correct. Yes. But if I say star AP without modifying, if I say star AP and if I get three, then it means it is going contiguous. Yes. yes. Yeah. Now I say warning is an incompatible, which is fine. I'm still going ahead with that. It's printing 101. So because it's not three, it is address. Pass the address of the exactly it address passed of the next block. It means it is array of five printing error of five. Yeah, now I'm going to reduce this to minus one. What does it mean? One address below the line. Can you see four and six now? Correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I hope this clarifies. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It means AP was pointing address past the six. Past the six. Okay. Correct. That was the next block. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah.
I, I, I can tell you, you can go and ask your colleagues also. It will be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At least, yeah. you know, you can show that, okay. Yeah, can, you, you guys are still learning C, okay? <laughs> some kids, some kids. Yeah. 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 It's a very interesting thing, yeah. So I hope it is clear that, you know, by having the array understood now, what we have learned is some of the very important rules of an array, that declaration and other things, passing of it, returning of it, array by address, starting addresses. We understood about dimension and this, some applications of an array. We've also explained a little bit about the array where, you know, offsetting is concerned, which was very critical right now. One is block-wise movement of an array and one was element-wise traversing, correct? We also understood that, you know, array, when it is passed as function, its size is completely lost. So either you must have another formal parameter introduced to explain the size, or you may have some macro element by which you can generalize the passing element, correct? Okay, yes. Yeah, so I think that is some extremely basics in an array. Now, we will extend a little bit more about an array in terms of uh, Strings and array. You know, so that's one of the things that there is no inbuilt string mechanism by which the data can be uh, represented. So one of the reason uh, where you know array comes more handy is if you have a character of an array which has to be represented as a string. You know, so all the string is an actually a collection of an array. So we want to do some extension there as well. So again, in main in here, now you see a char of an, say a word, and word can be mixed in say, H, E, and then L, and then again wing, L, and then we wing O. You know, and this is a, a characters, and then the last character being backslash zero, which is equivalent to saying you know uh, null. Okay. Now, every string in in C programming, you know, the uh, to know the end of the string, there's a very special character which gets suffixed, which is here backslash zero, which is equal to a null value. Okay. Okay. So different ways of printing this uh, array of characters is one is by using the character value. So I can say int i assign zero. I can say for i goes to, I can leave this empty because I already initialized. i less than, now I can say five plus plus i. And then I can just print them character by character. So I can say mod c slash t means a tab will be given and then I will print the value word of I. So this is like, you know, we are printing character by character, okay. the word. Okay, so we can say something like, okay. The string is char by char character. And yeah, so you don't print a null by the way. So up to the next step, we can see this stuff. Okay, what happened? Let's see the errors. Can we see? Okay, there's the first one backslash n. Yeah, so print f here, double quotes missing. Okay, was the first one. I think rest all is a, you know, or a yeah. cascading error, so we can skip this here. Do you use certain editor? Are you used to VI editor or something? Uh, we, yeah, I, I use uh, VI. Um, yeah. oh, oh. Fine. So this is an example of, you know, like you're printing all the, you know, string as if it is a character. But sometimes if you want to use something like a string, then you have a special formatter called as 
mod s correct mod s is specially designed to you know always search for a backslash zero so if there is a backslash zero it will stop searching the string and from there nothing else will be printed so i just want to show you that if i say just word okay. so remember i don't need to say word of zero word of one word of two word of three word of four and loop them inside got it yeah. i just say the name of the array base address and it will keep searching for that string till it finds the null character oh, that's uh... that's that's a way to determine so it's a special design by the compiler that in c language whenever you are looking for a string all the string will be formatted at the end with what backslash zero now just to give you this example let's see i'll give a backslash zero before this itself okay got it yeah. now characters are always being you know in single quotes and strings are always in double quotes if you notice that yes yeah yeah now based on this let's try to see what does my for loop does okay it will okay yeah yeah null could not be printed for you but now i will show you the difference if i wanted to go 6 here you can see that correct yes yes yeah because here it is hard coded it will skip the zero then it will go to o mm. but in the string what it does the moment it encounters what backslash zero stops yeah got it right yes got it yeah, yeah. just to have this more make it more clear in terms of the way so that looping you can see more easily there you go yeah so string just stops the moment it finds backslash zero that's it i don't care about anything after that so imagine that if it is an in if you have an uh, you know uh, uh, an array of a lot of characters and there are multiple you know backslash zero and then if you have to pick up the words or the strings then backslash zero itself becomes a condition for you so as long as you do not find a backslash zero you keep hunting then stop again go next keep hunting till you find stop again keep hunting find stop i mean we don't need to do these hard work because you know there are a lot of standard libraries which provides these string copy and all those stuff okay tokenizing of string reversing a string finding converting into upper string so lot of string cutter classes are there you know mm -hmm. where you can manipulate all these strings in a much much easier way you can find the length of the string you can concatenate the string you can you know convert a string into a number and so and so on okay okay there's a string dot hash library which is designed to manipulate all the basic strings which is uh, useful in programming and nowadays it has become more rich you know lot of you know even in companies what they do is they build some string utility library and you know write those wrapper and keep it so we just keep consuming those api okay. for example somebody will uh, create an api saying that hey you pass the string it is a, a imei number of a hardware equipment mm -hmm. number and it is a string but i will convert into a number and perform a checksum and check whether it's a unique number or not for example or somebody stores the entire checksum as an string but what you do is you convert from a string to a number so instead of manually converting a string to a number mm -hmm. what you do is you just use a api to convert you pass this string it will give you return your integer value okay. maybe then they will say that test the you know total summation of all this and if it finds the good number uh, then actually it is a good crc match or something you know okay. yeah However, I hope this is clear in in terms of the you know the string and the array. Yeah. 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 So I think this is extremely brief. We will take a five minutes break. Okay.
Okay. And then we come back, we talk about some structures, unions. Okay. Okay. And then add array of structures, array of unions, so that it becomes more comprehensive. Okay. Okay. Sure. All right. Yeah. So let me pause and I should be back in five minutes. Yeah. Let's break. Yeah. So from here, you know, I can open you for one of the string library, which you can refer it is built on arrays. So let's take an example of string copy utility. So as you can see here, string copy, there's a variation, str n cpy. There's a function by default provided, string copy. It says that this is your destination string and this is the source string. So this is your original content. And this will be copied to the, the destination. And there is another implementation which says fixed amount of, say I have a large array, but I just want to say copy from zero to 15th element or 10 to 15th element or so on. So, so in that case, you'll get additional size also. So imagine if you were a developer and you were to write the definition of this STRN copy, it should have been something like this. You can see the array manipulation here. Okay. Thank you. So I expect a string, which will be the output string definition. And this will be my input string definition and the size now what i do is i declare i zero i less than the n because that's the length limit you have given and this is a logical and means if you have more than one instruction then you will use the logical and instruction i'm sure you are aware of this mm, okay are you aware about the logical instructions yeah that, i'm aware of that um, okay i can i can cover them Okay. Yeah. Uh, see, and is not a bitwise and. Okay. This is a logical and. If you have to group two statements together mm -hmm. or two expressions together, then you can say, say, if i is less than n and SRC of i is not equal to null. Okay. So both, both, both conditions, conditions should match. Yeah. Yeah. And then you will go for the next. So every iteration i'm checking for that that as long as it is less than n which is fine in my range and still it is not a null then it makes sense for me to keep incrementing so all the source element character by character will be assigned to the destination okay. the moment i do that if i less than n i plus plus destination of i will be made as backslash zero it means what i'm explicitly saying null to them Okay. This is pretty interesting. If you do not assign this to your destination, will never be able to know if you want to fetch the destination, you will never be able to know where is the end of it. So what I can ask you is why don't you try one definition of your own? Say for example, can you try how a string copy could have been implemented on your own? as an assignment. Okay, sure. Yeah. Okay, uh, just on your own, you just try. Okay. Think that, you know, there is a character here, I'll make it as destination. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'll say some, some hundred characters max. And here I will have the source. And I'll make it as source to be. This is a test string. Okay. Okay. And you have your function say, my strcpy where destination comma src is there. Name of the array itself is the base address. 
right? Yes. Yes. So this also in this, you know, and when you are done with this, after this function comes up, you try to print the string in this is modus. So when we print the est, the result should be what? This is a test, test string. Okay. Yep. So try this on your own. And so it will give you the, you know, arithmetic play with array. Okay. Okay, I've just commented this for you. Would you try this offline so that we can try something else? Um, yeah, that, that's fine too. I mean. Sure. Okay. 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 Now let's get into another concept, which is structure and union. So first we will finish the structure. So as I said, you know, there is no convenient method of representing the real time of work. Now you just now you saw the array has a limitation that if you declare it as an integer, it can only store integer. If you declare double, it can only store double, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so structure is meant for, you know, real world uh, object being declared and struct always starts with the keyword struct and it follows by the name of the structure you want to build say you wanted to build a structure, say device. So you can declare the structure and you can define the structure, okay, with its uh, size. So you can say struct device open and close semicolon. And then you can declare what are the things a device can contain. So you can think of say a device, say, can be given a unique ID. We can think of device can be given a name or a liars. Maybe you can give some limitation. You can also give something like an end status. So you can also think of device stat. Correct. You can also give uh, right, dev product ID and so on, something like this. Now, what will be the size of this struct? Struct says it will add all the elements in a order of accessibility. So I will say size of struct mod d slash n. And then I would say size of struct device. Now, if it becomes a problematic stuff for you to keep printing, you know, the device, device, struct device, struct device becomes a challenging thing, right? Mm -hmm. So you can give a type def also. A type def is a keyword by which you can create your own unique data type. I want to show you first this one, GCC, struct or C. As you can see, the size of struct is 40 bytes. Yeah, yeah. But my question is that this is a struct where integer takes four bytes, correct? Yeah, 38. So it should be 38. How come it is 40? So this is where a concept of structure comes with. So struct has a very unique function, malady called as padding and packing. Padding and packing of the structure is compiler dependent. Most of the time it performs the padding 
in order to favor the speed over the memory. Let's take with a more simpler example. Mm -hmm. We'll say struct. Okay. And I'll say a word. Or X test some name and here I'm going to take int data and character status or some sample device I'll just say something like this okay. yeah it's possible that I can give a name for the device here also if something like this also and I can initialize the structure with some data over here. Say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I can give some status say, O is for on and, or, yeah. Something like this. It's also possible in this case, what happened? the variable dev is already declared and defined at the time of structure declaration come definition also okay. another way is you see another style also you will have a structure declared but Definition is given that not the device. People make this more convenient by saying type def okay. struct sample device say SD. Now SD becomes what? A short name for sample device. Oh, okay. okay. It's a new data type mm -hmm. which refers to sample device. So if I want to tomorrow create a and object of or instance of the sample device, I will say SD, some eval dev1, something like that. So what does eval dev1 refers to? A sample device, which will have one as integer and another as status. status. And if I wanted to print the size of this, I can say size of? SD. Ah, SD also is fine. Or the variable itself is there? Variable itself you can pass. Okay. Ah, I can print that also. As you can see, the size is eight bytes. That's also surprising. This is four, yeah. and this is one. Five bytes it should be. Five. Yeah. Now see, this is because of the computation bottleneck of the address busing. You know, on a, just to quickly explain you about this padding packing. Is. Okay, I'll be clearing this screen. Yeah. So let's, you know, think of these all to be referring to the same physical memory. Okay. But one of them in the memory is accessed in terms of just bytes. Another memory is organized in terms of half a word. Half a word means in a single clock cycle, I can access two bytes. And in another architectural way of accessing, I have a word aligned access. So I'll have this also. Okay. So if I consider, you know, the storage for the previous one, I will have my values being stored 
Where is my format? Okay. I will say here, say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I have something like O. Oh. In this case, I'll have maybe 12 and 34. And then I may have 56 and 78. In this case, we may have 12. 34, 56, then 78, and then you have something like, oh, here also you have, so this is a bad, So you know, on a 32-bit CPU, okay. okay, what are the possible way of addressing the RAM area? So you must have guessed it's all the three possibilities, right? Yeah. So if I think that I have a, a CPU over here, Is this? Wait a bit. It's possible for it to have an access in terms of bytes. So in this case, what happens? All the memory will be accessed in terms of what? Tidbits. Yes. So, so entire RAM in this case is being accessed as if it is a Single bit, right? This all refers to a eight bit access. Yes. Or a byte access. Yeah. Or another answer could be that okay, I can have an access of half a byte or word, half word access in this case. Half word is eight eight bits. Or? Uh, 16 bits. 16 bits, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, in this case, I will be needing more. So what compiler does it, if it goes for, you know, this, see here, how many cycles we will take to uh, read the entire data? If I go byte wise, five cycles. Correct. If I go to half word, I will take how many? Three cycles. In the third cycle, I will have to have a pad and extra byte, whether I use it or not. I have to pad an extra byte for that so that I can access it in one single cycle. Okay. Yeah. The same thing happens when I'm going for a 32 byte. 32 bit, because I am a 32 bit processor. Why not I word align all the other data which can be straight away padded in two cycles only I'll fetch up both the data. You're getting it? Yes, yes. So yeah. most of the compiler no, by default prefers to have a padding concept. But you might not always want to have this. You want to have some you know, memory storage controlled by you. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you may use a concept of what? We call it as a packing. Okay. So this is an example of what? Padding by default to take an example of speed. Mm -hmm. Now, if we do packing, it will be stored in this order which we want to though it is not a, a requirement to be done by the developer, mm -hmm. uh, we should know this, you know. So there are two ways to control this. Now let me show you how we do that, okay. There's a concept called as pragma pack concept, okay. And there's an attribute pack concept. So we can say something like, Prima pack of one. Before this, I will say 
like my pack of two. Before this, I would like to say no pragma. And then we want to see the way compiler will behave for this program. You can see the junk pragma pack has been assigned. Pragma can be used only once in the time. It should be globally available for a structure. So now I will say here, pragma pack one, uh, semicolon, I'll remove it first. It's a macro. That was one mistake. That's why it's saying Jack. First to show you global stuff. Can you see the size of the structure has become what? Five. Uh, so it's exactly. Uh, yeah, it's in byte order. Yeah, yeah. I'm influencing the compiler. Now I'll say pragma two. It means what? I'm trying to have an access to, now you can see once the pragma is packed as one, pack two has no uses. Yeah. Correct? It can be entire structure way. That's the problem. Yeah, but if I say globally, a pragma to be pack two. Okay, can I think you should also test for the another size the size of the struct device and the size of the struct sample device. Correct? Mm -hmm. So here, struct device should be what? Struct device, because we do not have a type def for it. Yeah. yeah. And we haven't declared any member for this. As you can see, 38 bytes as we guessed at that time. 30, four plus four, eight. Yes, 38, correct. Yeah, the, yeah. but the problem is to access these all, it will take 38 cycles. That will be damn slow. Okay. Otherwise it would have picked up in 40 means 10 cycles. Oh, okay. It saves two bytes, but it takes 38 cycles. Okay. okay. So in a rich computer where you do not worry about the memory, I mean, timing is a very critical thing, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's how they consider. But we should know that if we need to control it, Pragma is a very, you know, unique macro by which, you know, hardware specific modification or compiler specific things can be done. But, you know, according to the coding guidelines of the company, mm -hmm. developers are not supposed to touch Pragma macros and all. These are like, you know, architectural way of influencing the program. Okay. So it will change the meaning in the entire code base and suddenly somebody can experience some heavy uplifting or heavy downlifting in the program and it can cause some challenge also. Okay. Maybe if seniors are aware about this, some hardware performance engineers come to know about this, they may fire the developer also, they don't care. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, it depends on how severe the code base is and the client is also, right? Yeah. Because this is directly you're addressing the hardware specific stuff. Yes. Yeah. Now, you know, GNU provides you structure specific. Uh, Here, the problem is what? Once you apply this pragma, it is for all the structures in the system. Correct? Correct. Yes. Now, what if you wanted only for sample device, but not for the device? There's a possibility to use underscore underscore attribute ops and in bracket you could specify a behavior called as packed okay by using this syntax in GNU we can influence a certain structure only to be a part of that As you can see, only sample device is byte accessed. It's more fine grained. The structure device will not suffer from a timing problem. They will teach themselves in 10 cycles, isn't it? Um, I'm sorry, can you please repeat that? Yeah, what I was trying to say is, 
Okay. Instead of using a pragma, if I use an attribute aspects of it, so by using an attribute at the end of the structure declaration, okay. and if I use this feature called as packed, it means now only this structure is byte addressed. All the other structure will have no impact on it. Oh, okay, okay. So that's the difference. Yeah. Can you see the difference? Yeah, but still the, I mean, the yeah. number of cycles, yeah. I mean, like int and char uh, is still five, five bytes, right? That's not changing in the sample device. Yeah, because I put an attribute, no, line number 25. Look at line number 25. Yeah. So I say attribute packed. So packed means there is no padding going on. Exact five bytes are there. It will take five cycles to complete. So I want only this structure to be accessed byte wise. Maybe it is. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, it can. Yeah. yeah. But not for the other structures. Understood. Yeah. So imagine in a source code base, if I have 500 structures. Yeah. And among those 500 structures, there are two structures, which is memory mapped with the hardware. Now you can think of this sample device, which I have attributed, it may be mapped, IO mapped to a hardware or memory mapped to another hardware, correct? correct. Yes. So in the software, I'm representing as if it is another chipset, think like this. Okay. And if I declare a pointer of this and hold the physical address of that memory, if I write anything over here, it is as good as writing to that device, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah, so now if I wanted to serialize them, maybe that hardware which is designed, it is only to be read by byte, not by the yeah. word, correct? Right, right, yes. Yeah, so you know, it's a minor way of, you know, minute way of, for, of you know, handling the byte wise access for certain hand picked structures rather than the entire set of structures also. Okay, I, I understood. I, yeah, I, I got confused with uh, the device is supposed to be uh, 30, 38. So basically, ha, ha, so ha. the padding is taking place still. But yeah. if you find the struct, then it just considers only for that particular. Uh, exactly. So if I use this attribute technique, it refers to only that structure. That's it. Okay. Clear? Yeah. yeah. It is also possible that you know you can write nested structures also. So it is possible that you have a struct. Say, we want to have a design of a structure person. Okay, I will remove this. Yeah. See, I have a struct person. Mm -hmm. And here I have the person's name, which is say again some 30 characters name. And I will have say another struct called as date of birth, DOB. This is called as nested structure. And here I can have in today, again, maybe a character of month of say four. Maybe my plan is to have something like Jan, June, July kind of thing, you know, three characters representation, one is null. So why I used four characters? J A N is three characters. After three characters, the fourth character will be null. So I can treat this as a string, correct? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe in here. And then I can have a DOB. And then I can also have a have a, a character. Let's see. Person. Or maybe and persons H something like this. And I declared it. Then I can use again type def person 
which is a struct person person got it <clears throat> so now person becomes a data type for me yeah you know yeah and how would you use them so simple okay destruct this function i do not want to disturb me let's not write much gets into this function and now let's write everything inside this function yeah so we'll talk about you know struct person person here person say any so one thing is i could have initialized here itself by saying how i can write my name say any image then from here another bracket notice Yeah. Okay, and then say something like this. And now here I'm going to add, say, my date. So I may say something like, something like this. See. So this is a way to initialize. It is also possible that. we can initialize a person in a different format i can also say something like in you know not in exact order the way we want sometimes you know i am only sure about certain other stuff so i can say something like and then i'll say here is equal to notice what i can say i can say dot mm -hmm. persons age is equal to something dot persons name is equal to got it yeah yeah it is possible like this also that you can have the array the sorry structure being declared and defined in a not in an exact order when you are not sure of some of the elements being get defined by you you could perform this way also another way is also an initialization or determined way okay first let's try to just compile this and see expected structure is not being allowed here okay so in gnu extension the field is not been allowed actually it should be allowed to have this uh, kind of an okay. structure so it is quite you know the the age is equal to 43 is a is a legal way of uh, initialization it must allow that it's a gnu extension not in nc nc you cannot do this oh, okay. okay yeah so i think there is something which i'm missing okay not semicolon here yeah 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 comma yeah. so yeah persons unknown field okay typo now it's person age not person's age okay. and it's a person's name so there's a typo there later yeah correct can you see yeah yeah yeah, yeah. see this kind of uh, structure is very heavily visible in uh, when you write device drivers okay so okay. uh, just to, you will just to show you just off track for a moment because you'll get you will be able to remember this because of an example So I will show you one driver, maybe, uh, and that all. Okay, maybe car drivers. Okay. Yeah. 
She's a small character driver. And just trying to show you that stuff. See? There's a struct called as what? File operations. And the name of the structure starts, ends. So dot owner assigns something, comma, dot read assigns to some other, dot write assigns to some my character, comma. You can see that syntax? Yes, yes. Yeah. It means there is a structure which has this element and I'm using those element with dot and assigning it to whatever my function or elements are, okay? So when you get into, you know, some structure declaration, you will often come across these kind of syntaxes also. So that's the idea of, you know, like this, is, it should not be a shocker kind of thing that, hey, what is this here? I was never you know, aware about structure being initialized like this. Yeah. yeah. Just a quick question. Yeah, go ahead. This is a struct uh, DOP, right? The fun thing. Mm -hmm. We defined int and char and int. So then it ends with DOB. Uh, huh. So the name is, like I can decide on a variable name, right? So it, oh, okay. I, which that's, is very specific to this person. I can leave it empty as well. Yeah, but that's a variable name. Um, yeah, it's a variable name, exactly. But the variable, I mean, we are not defined as any particular type, right? In term, that's... That is the part of DOB. It's a nested structure itself. Oh, okay. So, which internally refers to integer, string, and integer. So, okay, okay. That's you know, another, you know, more way, another way also to initialize is, so in this case, no, DOB is not visible to anybody else. It means it cannot be reused. Only the way to use this structure is by having an element of outer structure. That's what I was trying to now explain. Okay. Say there is a Deepak is a variable. And I'll say Deepak dot assigning. Okay, I think it is too many D. Okay. Deeper dot. And now I'm going to use, say, person's name. And I'm going to copy this. Okay. okay. Something like this. And I, I do what is a, a string copy. And for this, I'll be needing a string dot h. Let me include that as well. So string done. And you know, how do I assign the another things? So I can say the perk dot. Now I'll say what? D O B dot d is equal to say again I can use deeper dot dob dot and day is already done I can focus on month now month is a string by the way mm -hmm. so I cannot assign one string to another I have to go by using copy method. So I will use something, say, November. And so a string cannot be assigned to each other, right? Array and array cannot be assigned, even though they are of same type, okay. right? Because they refer to two different memory location altogether. Okay. That's why you have to perform bit by bit manipulation or byte by byte manipulation. Okay. Uh, okay. What does it mean? Explain quickly here. Uh, yeah. If I have an int a of three mm -hmm. and b of three, though both of them are of integer type, a assigns b is illegal. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Yes. So it has to be a of zero is assigned to b of zero. That's fair enough. That's acceptable. Got it. No. Yes. Yeah. I got yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Though they are of same type, I can't because they refer to different memory location. Assigning doesn't work that way. It's a block. 
So that's why we are doing a string copy. Why? Because from one character to another character, we are assigning a of zero, a of one, a of two, a of three, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And then you will say Deepak, just to give you that, you know, in this case, DOB is only possible for you to access through, I mean, uh, per, uh, the person's variable. So outer variable can only have an access, given access to the internal variable. Otherwise, it is not possible for you to okay. have an access, something like this. And then, you know, again, the last one element is that the Perk dot, I think it's name, so positions, age, assigns to sip. If somebody is on, yeah, something. So all these three style of initialization and assignment, you can see. Now you can do a contrast here. You can say, if why not we do something like this? I can take this and place it outside. Don't you think so? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, in this case, it's an outer structure, you know. Then it's another design. In this case, what I can do is I can say struct dob, dob, something like that. This is now, again, an inner structure, but now it is a part of an independent structure. Somebody else can make use of what? Dob also directly. It's another structure, right? Yes. So it's your design that do you want to hardcore certain inter, you know, uh, some certain data inside a particular structure. The reason is if you want to have an access to these data, you have to have an access to this outer structure. So without my, you know, device information, I cannot give you device configuration. Okay. Without my device configuration, I cannot give you the de device script file. Yes. Without the device script, I cannot give you the device data, something like this. Okay. So if somebody wants to access the device data, first and foremost, he should access what? The device okay. header. Then from device header, I will give what? Say the device data structure. Then from device data, I'll give the script and then the specific device data, something like that. Okay. Yeah. So it is up to us to have a privatization of the design or enforcing the design that, you know, whether we want to have multiple structures which can be reused as a component for others also, or should we enforce somebody to always use my outer structure in order to get the inner structure information. So these all are design add one. No rule apply. It is just how we think, you know, our real time objects which can be represented uh, can be accepted there. Okay. So I think from initialization perspective, let's keep it over here. Okay. Yeah. And maybe for today, let's uh, hang up here. What do you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you know, we may end up saturation. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just keep it here. Let's have tomorrow's session where we'll continue with this structure. We'll complete the union, then get into arrays of structure so that we are still in this game of declaration and data. Okay. So the, my, my whole idea is that before we get into pointers, okay, yeah. uh, which I'm aiming the after tomorrow to at least introduce. Okay. okay. Yeah. I want to finish all the possible data based dealings, data and function, data and function should be over to you. Okay. So you should be confident about all the possible data type declarations, the way arrays can work, the way structure works, the way union works, the way array of structure works, array of union works the way function works, function passes parameter, function passes structure, function passes arrays, function passes array of structure, returns array of structure, returns function address, and so on and so on. Okay. The moment we are through with this, then I will introduce pointer. Okay. So that the moment we start running pointers, pointer to anything applies, no rule. Okay. 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 And there we will spend more amount of time. Sure. Yeah. Okay. At least three to three sessions for sure. Yeah. Sure. All right, then let's uh, take it Excellent. a break. Yeah, and enjoy. Can you, I mean, um, uh, yeah. reference, uh, like I can go through for this array and structures that. Exactly. So there is a, an example which I have placed. One is a cnotes.txt. Okay. 
okay you uh, can refer to in the note section okay mm -hmm. and another one okay let me share you in the drive okay on this uh, drive and then we have the c4 embedded developers yep and here you know, in introduction to GCC, you know, this is the place where you can spend some time, yeah? Introduction to GCC. Yeah. So here, in fact, you have some array examples placed. Preprocessor. Oh, no, no, this is for the build I gave you. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, friends. So one is on. Uh, you... No, no, I'll come down there. NCC. And we will talk about. Storage. Student. So I wanted to show you. So we'll refer to chapter fifth okay. of NCC. That will give you the array list. Okay. And I think even you should have the notes, isn't it? Well, with notes, we don't have notes. Um. I saw the notes somewhere. It's a PDF document, right? Uh, yeah, I kept it there. Okay. So yeah. maybe I'll mail you the detail there so that you can have a look at it. Okay. Okay. Sure. Build tool chain notes. Okay. See notes dot something. And if it is for some reason missed, I will add that. I, I saw that somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I saw. So okay. So yeah, I will. I will for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I should put that in references. There is something called as you know the. Pre reading material also. Okay, here. All the basic arrays I have uh, actually covered here. So it may be also a very quick way to watch if you can, you know. Yeah, I went through this, uh, I mean, yesterday, a few pages. Yeah. It's, it's really nice. I mean, yeah. I, I've just, you know, plugged in. So yeah, this is something, yeah, here. So this is page number 27th onwards. See, the declaration of an array. Overview of an array. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll go through this. Uh, this one you can finish. It will be pretty fast for you. All initialization techniques, multi dimensional arrays, dimensions addressing, passing, multi array. Please go through this. Okay. Sure. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Uh, yeah. Sure. All right. Let's catch up tomorrow again. Yeah. See you. Good night. For sure. Good night.